organizing this uh, nice workshop. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm very happy to come back to this home university. Actually, I studied in CPU almost uh, 20 years ago. And as a student, start uh, MPhil, starting with uh, Steve Smell, then start a long odyssey uh, of my journey. Uh, actually, I'm a mathematician mostly. Uh, uh, I'm uh, not quite working on genomics uh, uh, for the moment, but uh, my talk is a kind of methodology. We are applying, trying to apply this methodology to genomic study, so it's ongoing work. What I'm going to report is mostly related to the imaging part, but uh, high-grade information from genomics and the imaging is still ongoing. So hopefully, uh, give you some uh, glimpse of the uh, benefit of such algorithm. It's a kind of a mathematical tool we call the differential inclusion. But uh, you will see soon uh, what it really means by differential inclusion. It's really some uh, simple algorithm. And uh, for this work, I uh, mostly collaborate with my student, uh, uh, Dr. Sun. Uh, he just got a PhD from Peking University. And my colleague, Yi Zhou Wang, uh, in Peking University as well, and some other doctor, uh, Dr. Hu from the uh, Capital University of Medical Science in Beijing, and uh, other student, uh, Chen Di Huang and Jie Chao Xun, uh, he already joined the Tencent AI lab now. So uh, also the theoretical part come from um, collaborations with my, uh, uh, with my colleague, Stan Ocean and Wu Tao Yin in UCLA, and also my former student, Feng Ran, who is studying uh, statistics, uh, PhD statistics in uh, Stanford uh, University now. OK, so the outline is like this. Uh, today, I'm, uh, first, I'm going to talk about uh, Alzheimer's uh, de detection. So this uh, detection uh, from uh, medical imaging uh, suffers a lot about this uh, heterogeneity, about the features. So I will show what's really I mean about the uh, heterogeneity of uh, disease features. And then we propose some methodology. I uh, use this uh, phrase, boosting with structural sparsity, refers to this family of uh, new algorithm to solve uh, the structural sparsity recovery problem. And uh, uh, apply this uh, type of new methodology to the Alzheimer's uh, case, then we can see how we achieved the state of our result so far. So that's the outline of this talk. So the Alzheimer's disease, uh, maybe many of you are uh, kind of medical background, you know better than me. So it's a kind of a complex, uh, chronically progressive neurodegenerate uh, disease. So most common form of dementia, in elderly people worldwide. So, so far, about uh, 2015, they, there were statistics that are 29, more than 29 million AD people, and uh, 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 that consists of the 60 or 80 percent uh, of the dementia. And actually, the dementia up to that year already account for 1.9 million deaths. So, it's a kind of uh, very important, and, but uh, so far we understand very little about this uh, disease, uh, how to cure that. So basically, uh, the patient with Alzheimer's disease is transition, transition from normal control to mild uh, cognitive impairment, and then to AD. So along this process, uh, there's no clear rule to define what's the status of the d disease. But usually, if you look at the brain structure using some imaging technology, you see the changes, structural changes uh, 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 that happened a lot even before the functional changes detected. So usually this uh, picture comes from Wikipedia. You will see uh, mostly you will see the uh, cortex uh, kind of uh, cerebral cortex uh, kind of uh, shrinkage and uh, the significant enlargement of the uh, ventricles in this uh, kind of thing and with a uh, lot of uh, uh, you know, uh, like this picture, this is a normal br uh, brain. This is a cartoon for the AD brain. And uh, uh, recent years, uh, people use virus biomarkers, uh, including from uh, uh, neuroimaging to genomics. Uh, so in the following, I will mostly focus on the neuroimaging data. Uh, and uh, uh, in the future, we are going to proceed with the hybrid uh, uh, data for both genomics and uh, imaging. 
So the, actually, uh, we can uh, see that even using the drugs, uh, you can prohib somehow limit the symptoms, but the, uh, the drugs doesn't help, uh, I mean, recover the structure uh, impairment. So uh, usually, uh, when people using the structural MRI uh, imaging uh, uh, technology to uh, view the uh, patient's uh, image, you can roughly uh, classify the patients uh, into these uh, classes. Uh, to, so the main criteria for doctors uh, is to look at some particular area like hippocampus and salamus uh, in the brain and uh, look at whether the gray matter significantly reduce compared to the normal people of the template. So if that happens, then uh, doctors will classify these people according to this uh, kind of status. But what's the trouble with that? So actually, there are a lot of trouble uh, about this uh, voxel-based uh, uh, data analysis. Usually, when we look at an image, uh, we have to first pre-process the image into some voxel-based uh, uh, feature vector. For each feature that account to the uh, green matter uh, intensity within the voxel. So when you look at those features, roughly you can find that the feature may becomes very heterogeneous. Uh, some lesion feature we refer that are contribute to the disease, usually refer to the uh, the gray matter decay uh, in the uh, in the area in uh, corresponding to the voxel. On the other hand, the pre-processing steps in the imaging actually introduce another type of proceed we call the procedure bias in the future. And uh, these features are not directly related to the disease, but uh, it's a kind of a very helpful, uh, it's not the cause of disease, but very helpful in classification. So that may help you for digital evidence to find uh, Alzheimer's disease rather than the uh, medical uh, information. And also there are some uh, irrelevant or not features, so they are uh, very heterogeneous nature of features. Uh, what I mean by lesion, uh, our goal in those uh, uh, voxel-based neural image analysis uh, using such data is twofold. One is uh, we hope to accurately classify the different stages marked by the uh, doctors. Another important element, uh, we want some uh, stable feature selection uh, because lesion feature usually help doctor with uh, interpretable model. But also we uh, also pay attention on the procedure bias because that helps the classification or detection a lot. Although doctor doesn't think that's uh, reasonable features uh, in terms of medical prior knowledge. So these are the kind of uh, multifold uh, purpose in our uh, disease detection uh, with neural image. So what I mean by lesion features like this, so usually uh, people in uh, medical science uh, mostly focus on the lesion features. So that uh, has been uh, a lot uh, study on that. Uh, actually, the lesion feature usually we are uh, talking about uh, some uh, very uh, sparse uh, number of voxels which account for the gray matter decay. So that's uh, the main uh, feature that doctor can uh, use to classify the uh, patients uh, from the normal to, uh, to the AD status. And also this feature has very good, nice uh, geometric uh, property. They are tending to cl be clustered in those uh, atroph uh, atrophied regions. Uh, such, uh, such like uh, those uh, hippocampus and the salamus, these uh, various uh, regions. So that's the lesion feature uh, property. Uh, what, what I mean by procedure bias is very different nature. Procedure bias are usually introduced during the pre-processing steps when you uh, pr uh, deal with the medical imaging data. And uh, so here, we particularly mean by procedure bias, we refer to the uh, those enlarged green matter voxels, but uh, they are mistake, uh, mostly because of the pre-processing step. Uh, that usually associated with uh, uh, cere uh, cerebral spinal fluid uh, uh, in large space near the ventricle area, uh, like uh, near ventricle area or edge of uh, gyrus and uh, this uh, subarachnoid spaces. So all these space uh, in the neighbor of those uh, locations have certain uh, empty places which contains the cerebral 
the spin of fluid. So when the gray matter kind of uh, 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 shrinkage or the uh, uh, those CSF will tend to fill in the locations and uh, make it enlarge. So that's a kind of sophisticated procedure in pre-processing of the image, but uh, give you a wrong information saying that the gray matter actually the intensity is enlarged. Uh, so for doctors, these are not the uh, good indicator for the, uh, I mean, they are not the true lesion features, but uh, in the data analysis, very crucial, you will see later. It uh, significantly improved the classification uh, accuracy. And uh, these features are very different nature. So how these uh, procedure bias might be introduced in the pre-processing here is a uh, uh, cartoonic uh, illustration. Uh, so usually when we do the uh, neural image analysis, we first, because different people have different size of the brain, different shape of the brain, uh, most uh, like we have to do a pre-processing map everyone's brain to some standard brain, we call it template, template brain, or some uh, a registration process. In the, this uh, re registration process, if you have some uh, bigger volume, you have to map to some standard volume. So for example, if there is some voxel in ventricle or template, it's uh, like this. It, uh, if you want to uh, map it to a standard template, which is uh, smaller, then you map this area. So if the volume change, actually, you have to do some uh, renormalization for the intensity because uh, later the feature you extract is uh, about the, the intensity of the gray matter within each uh, voxel. So that, that means you must multiply the inverse of this uh, rescaling factor. So if uh, this volume uh, uh, get reduced, that means the intensity has to be enlarged uh, by the same factor. However, in the brain image analysis, uh, some area is really difficult to get a seg segmentation, like uh, ventricle area, what we have seen somewhere here. The ventricle area, that uh, those uh, uh, very dark uh, color, is difficult to separate from green matter and the, those uh, ventricle, uh, those uh, CSF content. So usually, if the CSF, those ventricle areas get enlarged, those CSF will be uh, enlarged. And uh, that may be wrongly counted into the gray matter enlargement after the registration. So because of this type of distortion. So this phenomenon has been noticed very early in neural image uh, pioneer when they do the uh, uh, pre-processing. But uh, so far, no one really serious make use of that in data analysis. And uh, uh, the lim uh, Currently, all the existing model mostly just explore the vision features because that's the most interpretable model for, uh, for, it explain, uh, for uh, this medical interpretation. So, but procedure bias uh, introduced uh, always exists there. And uh, very, uh, we find that procedure bias very helpful for classification. But so far, mostly people uh, simply disregard it. Uh, they use various prior more knowledge in the models they try to get rid of any clue about this uh, procedure bias. So uh, let's do some experiment first. Uh, so this is uh, our result with uh, this ADNI data set uh, coming from use collected by UCLA. And this data set contains uh, several hundreds of patients. And uh, e uh, that can be classified into several categories, uh, normal control, uh, with ad, uh, Alzheimer's disease uh, and a mild MCI, mild cognitive impairment, and other these uh, uh, three class of pa uh, patients, and we can do help some pair uh, classification, either AD versus NC. That's a, an easy one, but this one is much harder because MCI is very close to NC. It's difficult to uh, clearly uh, classify which one is MCI, which one is. Uh, and see, but uh, so we, we do this, uh, uh, we regard this uh, classification as a much harder one, high noise one. And uh, the data set actually uh, has either 1.5T MRI or another higher resolution 3.0 uh, MRI, and we use uh, 15 or 30 uh, represent these things. And uh, so this is, we use the standard neural imaging pre-processing. This is the VBM uh, DARTEL 
VBM pipeline described by Ash Werner, and uh, it's a commercially used uh, to process uh, uh, RNA type of data. Uh, and uh, the, finally, we get uh, such type of feature with a uh, voxel size like eight by eight by eight. So later we get, we are going to get it uh, uh, to higher resolution with a smaller volume of voxel. But so far, let's look at this this uh, voxel size. And the, this voxel size, after uh, taking up all the feature in the sense that the average value in the green matter population template greater than one, uh, 0 0.1, then we uh, preserve those uh, features and we get uh, 2,500 features. And uh, then we can do various type of uh, classification tasks uh, and see what happens. So this picture actually tells you uh, what's the difference if you exploit procedure bias and result using the uh, procedure bias. So this uh, blue curve actually represents the prediction accuracy uh, if we use uh, uh, some cross-validation scheme. And uh, this, uh, uh, both lesion feature and procedure bias are used in this blue curve. And uh, the red curve actually only used the uh, lesion feature that a uh, doctor can interpret that well. And uh, it, uh, the algorithm eventually converged to somewhere uh, both reach the same solution, but in the middle. So we will tell you why we need uh, early stopping somewhere here. But, uh, before talking about the algorithm, the gap between the blue and the red curve, that explains, accounts for the, uh, the benefit of using the procedure bias. Without using the procedure bias, you can lose a significant percentage of accuracy in prediction. So this is what we really benefit. And, and along this, uh, these two curves, we capture several temporal points. And uh, this picture, a kind of uh, illustration, what's the difference between the vision feature and the procedure bias. Usually, uh, if you start from uh, this point, usually uh, the clustered area in the hippocampus and the hippocampus, this area, will be the vision features. Doctors are happy to see that. However, there are some features scattered uh, very sparse, but scattered around those uh, uh, area with uh, CSF uh, happen to be there. Those are the procedure-wise features we captured. So that indeed helped a lot you, uh, with this uh, prediction. And, uh, what does the time axis refer to? Oh, I will tell you uh, soon about this algorithm. So far, you can see uh, this is a family of model with different sparsity level. And uh, I use time because later, uh, my algorithm use a uh, differential uh, dynamical system a uh, way to interpret this uh, family of model. So for the moment, you just see uh, every point on this uh, axis refers to a, uh, one sparse model. And uh, the, uh, the pair of model either does not take any procedure bias or take both features. And you see that uh, if you take both features, you will reach a better prediction performance and in fact, uh, uh, this highest point uh, uh, refers uh, means that uh, you can uh, take uh, uh, both uh, lesion feature and procedure wise, which is uh, much better than if you just take the lesion feature, the best model here. So that's the rough picture. I, I will come back to the detail how to interpret this uh, algorithmically. Okay, the main information is that uh, we indeed find some uh, uh, procedure bias. Uh, draw uh, as the blue dot like this, and uh, the red point will be something like uh, vision features. And uh, those uh, dot, uh, blue dot, if you drop it, you will uh, kind of decrease the prediction or the classification uh, accuracy. And uh, uh, another uh, thorough uh, uh, prediction result summarized like this, if you do the uh, our algorithm, I, I will call the G-split LBI, but uh, you will learn the name later. That's our method here, actually, along the, all the three uh, class, uh, these different uh, classification tests, you can see the performance uh, kind of uh, the best uh, up to, uh, compared to those uh, uh, common methods used uh, so far. So this accounts for how the, perhaps uh, give you a glimpse of how the uh, procedure bias might help you in improving the uh, general prediction accuracy. And uh, on the other hand, for feature selection, this method uh, we will uh, introduce later. And uh, this method is very stable, uh, much better than other type of uh, method in terms of the uh, consistency or stability of in feature selection. We use uh, how many times uh, the same 
feature, uh, the simplest uh, amount of feature uh, persistently discovered uh, in different rounds of uh, cross validation. And you see this one actually champions uh, uh, with the highest uh, uh, MDC score. So that may, means that the feature we discovered uh, uh, kind of most stable uh, among this set of tools. So that's the rough uh, information uh, about the numerical analysis result. Then the question is, uh, uh, how uh, can we do this? Uh, what's the meaning of those pictures? Uh, so I know what's the algorithm behind this uh, result. So below I'm going to share you some uh, uh, mes a new methodology. I personally call it boosting with uh, structural sparsity. Uh, boosting, I just try to bring a machine learning uh, terminology that has been very popular uh, 10, uh, 20 years ago. So mathematically, this method is essentially a dynamical system. It's a called differential inclusion method, uh, which is a kind of restrict gradient flow on some subspace or signal space, which contains most of the sparse uh, parameter you want to discover. And uh, the discretization actually of this method actually give you a kind of uh, special type of mirror descent. I call the sparse mirror descent algorithm. And uh, we also call the linearized Bregman iteration uh, later you'll see. And uh, so the most uh, crucial uh, uh, part for structure sparsity, we introduce some uh, variable splitting technique, uh, very popular in optimization. However, we find this is not only improved the optimization uh, algorithmic uh, implementation, but also improved the statistical precision. So that you have what you have learned that uh, both lesion feature and procedure paths can be simultaneously exploited is essentially due to this variable splitting technique. And also we can generalize uh, all this algorithm to some uh, statistical FDR heterogeneous smoothing uh, using an empirical base. So you will see this uh, information in the coming slide. And uh, to introduce uh, this methodology, let's uh, come back to this uh, very simple structural sparse regression. Uh, assume we just have a linear measurement uh, from uh, a high dimensional parameter beta star. And uh, from linear, unlinear measurement, you get this y. You have a given measurement matrix x. Your purpose is try to recover beta star. But recover, I mean uh, some subtlety. Uh, what you mean the recover. So uh, if the, uh, usually we assume the number of linear measurements much smaller uh, than, the, uh, than the ambient dimension P. So this is high dimensional statistical scenario. Uh, so usually we assume some uh, structural sparsity in the sense that after certain linear transform on this uh, true parameter beta star, you get ga gamma star. This gamma star is very sparse in the sense that the support set the number of non-zero component uh, in this uh, gamma star will be much smaller than n and p. So, so that's the notation. So this uh, summarizes a very typical uh, uh, structure, sparse structure of mathematics uh, literature, like uh, sparse linear regression. If we assume d is the identity, and uh, if uh, in uh, uh, in uh, image processing you use uh, total variation. <coughs> That means the D is a graph gradient. And uh, in wavelength society in signal processing, uh, D might be wavelet transform or any uh, 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 frame of different type of spark transform. So all these things can be summarized in this framework. But by the, uh, now we are, our purpose is to recover bit stop. The recover has two uh, set of me uh, meanings. One is uh, the sparsity pattern recovery. So it means uh, we want to know what's the sparsity pattern uh, in the sense that what's the support set of this gamma star. So we call this as uh, sparse consistency in statistics. And on other purpose, you want to characterize your estimator or your, your bit hat, which is uh, as close to as beta star in certain sense. So that's called a, a statistical uh, consistency. So we want the bit hat somehow converge to beta star, uh, not, not the sparsity pattern are just the uh, values. So these are the two uh, uh, fold of purpose in the high dimensional statistics. And uh, usually people use uh, the famous uh, generalized lasso to solve that means uh, you take the L1 norm trick uh, because you believe D beta should be sparse, you put a L1 penalty on this term. 
and then solve this uh, complex optimization problem. And if D equals identity, that's the popular lasso. And uh, for general D, actually, either in total variation and various name uh, appear in literature, even applied mathematician, uh, like the Stan Osher's team use uh, uh, D as the gradient operator in total variation minimization is much longer than the uh, statistical society using the lasso. Uh, and you, uh, people have developed various type of algorithms, mostly focused on given a fixed lambda how to solve this beta optimization problem over beta. Then various type of ADMM algorithm has been suggested in optimization. But uh, in, uh, in the statistics, really, our purpose, because we don't know what's the optimal lambda, our essentially computational challenge is to compute the full regularization pass in the sense that when lambda change in the positive number, and we want to obtain a family of model. So that uh, refers to the T family of model. So later, the lambda is uh, somehow a re um, parametrization of the T. Uh, and uh, so these are uh, for the full regularization pass. Uh, uh, Brad Efron actually suggests this angle regression for lasso, and many people uh, like Peter Ryan and Jonathan and Taylor, uh, Jonathan Taylor, they uh, gave uh, some uh, package, R package called Gen Lasso to solve this full regularization task. But everything involved here is very expensive. We solve, uh, we use homotopy method to solve a family of the complex optimization quadratic optimization problem. And uh, what, but uh, assume if you indeed can solve this uh, family model, what's the best possible? Uh, the best possible, and uh, let's take a simple case of lasso if D just equals identity. Whatever you solve, uh, the best possible is called uh, uh, this oracle as meta means uh, uh, if God told you what's the support set of your model, you can simply restrict your estimator on the support set and get this one. So uh, no matter how you estimate, this is always the best possible. And uh, this oracle estimator is essentially the true parameter plus certain Gaussian, high dimensional Gaussian noise. And uh, such that this uh, uh, estimator has the center or the mean as the true parameter and the variance covariance matrix suffer uh, is given by this one. This is the sigma denote as the noise level. So we have the normal, normal distribution for this estimator. And in particular, because the mean of this oracle estimator is beta star, we call it unbiased because the expectation of this oracle estimator equals to the true parameter. So that's the best you can do. But if you use lasso, what's the trouble for lasso? If you use lasso, solve this one, and now we just assume D equals identity. That, that's the objective function. And uh, if you take first order TKT condition, you'll get this uh, equation. And uh, so here we use T equals to 1 over lambda, uh, because later we use dynamical system to re that. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that does not make you too annoyed. But if you all the solution information just uh, contained in this automatic equation, so uh, analysis of this one starting from uh, Donahoe's BPDN and last uh, students long history, what happened is uh, lasso estimate is always biased. So if you take a very simple example, you take uh, identity as the design matrix X. And uh, if you take one dimensional N and one dimensional P, one measurement and uh, one input. So then you get a lasso estimator. You can solve this equation. That's essentially the estimator for any tau can be written like this form. If tau is smaller than the net inverse of the oracle estimator, then this will be this estimator will be zero also estimator. If tau is larger, then that means the uh, oracle estimator minus one over tau. Tau will change from zero to to a, a small number to very big. So this gives you the lasso regularization pass close form solution. So this one over tau is a constant. It's not a random variable. It never vanishes. So that accounts for the uh, shrinkage effect or the bias effect for lasso. So if you do a simulation, we take 100 measurement and 256 uh, uh, dimension and take this as far signal or parameter. And uh, the red bar represent the original uh, parameter. And the blue bar represent the lasso estimator for certain power. 
So you see, typically you can see the shrinkage of the estimator from the original one. So this illustrates the bias issue for last year. And uh, if uh, <coughs> you, uh, some people in statistics have studied that more carefully, so if you assume the lasso estimator is uh, uh, sign consistent or pass consistent in the sense that at certain tau n along the regularization pass, there is an estimator who supports that exactly the true S. So uh, that's the oracle given. So assume you need the oracle given even on the lasso pass. Even in this case, you can solve lasso estimator from the previous uh, KKT equation precisely like this. So the lasso estimator uh, at support that equals to the oracle estimator, which is unbiased, minus this part. This is uh, deterministic. It's not random. So the black, the red part is the bias of lasso associated with this, uh, with this estimator. So the question is uh, how to remove the bias from lasso because that always reduces the contrast or the resolution of your estimation. Uh, Statistics uh, have suggest a various approach uh, uh, using non convex regularization because uh, to remove bias, you have to take uh, the penalty term uh, from L1 to be some non convex in the sense that you have to make the penalty when the magnitude of collection, the parameter are large, you have to make it flat such that the derivative equal to zero. Then the, what remains in the KKT first order equation is just the uh, uh, maximum. Uh, just the least square solution. So this is the uh, essential idea. Uh, so that flat uh, penalty uh, make it uh, all the penalty involved here has to be non convex So although statistically it may be uh, uh, much better than last year in estimate, but uh, computationally it's very hard because uh, uh, finding a global optimizer associated with such a non convex uh, uh, objective uh, problem is a uh, very uh, difficult, and uh, some people like in year show that it's NP hard in the worst case. So now the question is: uh, Is there any other simple scheme? If everything we come from this uh, statistical simple statistical model, and uh, if our purpose just want to reduce bias, and uh, so here is a very simple idea: If we come back to the last two uh, problem like this, we still reparametrize lambda to be t and you know, t here, that's the equivalent way. And if you take a KKT first order equation, you get a rho t, rho t essentially is the subgradient of beta, it's one norm, uh, subgradient by one norm. Then that equals to the negative, uh, the gradient of this part, negative gradient of this part. You get this uh, equation. And then now from this equation, you do not go to last last estimator. So how about make a trick? You just take a derivative with respect to t because uh, all the variables on the left hand side and right hand side depending on t parameter t. So this is rho t depend on t and bit t depend on t. So if you take derivative on both sides, you get this equation. We collect everything depend on t on the right in this uh, blue part. Then what happened? What happened is interesting because rho t is a subgradient of beta one now. So Assume in a certain uh, time, uh, at certain parameter tau, uh, which may depend on the n, some of the n. So at this particular time, we get a solution which is sign consistent in the sense that the rho t pattern, sign pattern, exactly is the true uh, parameter sign pattern. So because this is a subgradient, so that means rho t at those uh, element must be either constant plus or negative plus. Then if you take the derivative, that equal to zero. And uh, on the left hand side, that equal to zero, then the blue part exactly solves the oracle estimator. Then this uh, <coughs> calculus tells you, essentially you can remove the bias just using this derivative trick. So assume you have a last one estimator, uh, like a uh, closed form written to be the bias solution like this. If you take the blue part, uh, then it, that cancels this uh, red part, essentially, because uh, derivative, everything just depends on this one over tau. If you take derivative, one over tau becomes negative one over tau square. And multiply by tau, then you get negative one over tau. 
and plus original, you cancel this part. So this is a simple trick, means uh, we can use the differentiation on take the condition on both sides to avoid this, uh, uh, automatically avoid this bias. So that suggests you to replace this blue part by this uh, new variable, and we define this new differential equation, or more precisely, we call differential inclusion, because rho t is only restricted on a subset. So that's uh, differential inclusion dynamics. And uh, this dynamics actually just, if you come back to lasso KD condition, it just replaced the rho t divided by t by this uh, derivative. So that's why I use t in the model parameterization, just because this uh, analog between the lasso and this differential inclusion. And this uh, interesting dynamics was first uh, suggested by Osher's group in 2006 in image recovery. Uh, they observed that along these dynamics, uh, the object uh, in the large scale uh, will first appear, and the fine scale will later uh, appear as t increases. So they call it inverse scale space. So that gave you a family of models from the call screen to find <coughs> detail of the model. So this is a very interesting dynamics, but uh, we bring it to back to the uh, sparse modeling in statistics. So this uh, de devising effect, you can observe that actually you take the same simple example like before, uh, you just get a hard thresholding in this simplified example as the take a differential inclusion solution. You remove the one over top uh, in last two, but that does not give you the bias. So in, the, in this sense, if you have a orthogonal design, this ISS just gives you the hard thresholding family solution. And a similar example on the left is the simulation example with a shrinkage effect for lasso that dem uh, demonstrates the bias. And uh, here is the uh, ISS. You really can see the estimate is very close to the original in magnitude, so that removes the bias. And uh, how to solve that, uh, actually, uh, you can solve it uh, using a sequential restricted maximum likelihood. Uh, we don't need to talk about too much in detail. And uh, the most particular information is here. Once, uh, uh, in this dynamics, once any point, particular point, you reach the sign consistency in the sense that the rho t equals to the sign pattern of the true parameter, then you immediately get the oracle estimator at this point. So you get the devising effect here. And uh, here is one example. We used uh, Efron's uh, diabetes uh, uh, example to illustrate the idea. On the left is the lasso regularization path. We see that's a piecewise linear. Uh, you can view the x-axis uh, kind of uh, changing the regularization parameter lambda, or t equivalently. Then you get a family of model at different point uh, there are nine parameters and different points, the sparsity change. So here, just two green parameter, 2 mean and 0, and here the third one, and so on. The, finally, you get a very dense least square solution. And for the ISS dynamics, uh, you see the similar pat, uh, pattern of curve in the sense that the order of these curve coming from very similar order. However, the magnitude might be very different. We know this path may be can be unbiased. So it's a piecewise constant. It's not a damping behind. Uh, so this is uh, better in terms of devising effect. So that's the ISS. And uh, actually, uh, people may wonder, how does it work? Uh, in the ideal case, we have given a theory, a uh, past consistent theory in 2016. Basically, we show uh, under nearly the same condition for lasso, for sign consistency, we can find some point on the regularization path at t and rho at t such that the points are sparse and the, the, the model return here are sparse and the sign consistency means that the sign pattern of it will be the same as the true sign pattern and uh, that's exactly the oracle estimator which is unbiased so better than lasso and uh, to achieve that you need early stopping regularization uh, if you do not stop your algorithm uh, as t grows, you probably find the wrong one. So that's the main information. And uh, the basic idea is uh, this ISS is a kind of restrict gradient descent. So you can view your loss function in a high dimensional x-bit, this saddle point feature. 
So along this uh, subspace direction, we call it oracle subspace. That's the support side of your signal. And uh, along this uh, subspace, it's uh, strongly convex or restrict strongly convex, restricted on this subspace. And uh, on the other direction, you get a uh, very flat. So the saddle point here will be the oracle estimator. So the dynamics, if you start from zero, always uh, rapidly flow down in this uh, subspace. If you satisfy certain coherence condition, it never flow goes away. It uh, leave this subspace. And uh, until you reach the saddle point here, you have to stop the algorithm with certain early stopping rule. Otherwise, it flow away, get an overfitting solution. So this is the, all the message uh, behind this uh, uh, this dynamical system point of view uh, uh, as an alternative to lasso, and uh, we can make it a discretized, a simple discretized algorithm. And this algorithm actually is discovered uh, uh, by uh, these uh, two uh, these people, uh, Wu Yin actually in his uh, PhD thesis, he called it a linearized Bragman iteration, even without knowing any information about the inverse scale space. space just discover this discretized algorithm. And uh, you can build this discretized algorithm as a, a EULA forward EULA discretization of the damp dynamics from this ISS. Because you know our original ISS is a piecewise constant. It's difficult to follow the path because there are lots of jumps. And uh, to make it uh, uh, easy to discretization, you need to make it continuous. We add a damping factor as gradient descent. Uh, well, treated uh, uh, with parameter one over kappa. So if kappa goes to infinity, that means this one will come back to the piecewise constant ISS. But for any finite kappa, this will be a, a continuous curve. So you can make it make a discretized algorithm very simple like this way. Then you have two parameter in this algorithm, either stack size or this kappa, and it has to satisfy the product uh, with this. Uh, has a matrix uh, spectral norm has to be bounded by two. So that's the very simple truth algorithm. And uh, this algorithm is very easy for parallel implementation. This is our test on 16 core uh, CPU. You can see on very simple, almost a linear speed up. This is ideal. The, the red curve is our actual uh, achievement for on near linear speed up. And um, we can also generalize uh, all the simple idea algorithm to the general loss function. This loss function can be even non-convex, as the picture we showed before. It doesn't matter. As long as the restrict subspace is convex, uh, uh, then that's fine. And uh, also, we can generalize this uh, penalty uh, to any Minkowski functional, uh, or even any convex function is fine. Uh, that always works here. And uh, the linearized Bragman algorithm uh, uh, okay, this one I can skip that. If you are curious uh, with this algorithm, we write our package on the CRAN. You can feel free to use that. So the original version is the first version given by uh, my ex-student in Peking University. Uh, Feng Ran, he now study in Stanford. And uh, this is uh, my post-ex-PhD. Uh, uh, and uh, the current version is uh, 1.6 uh, version. You can find the uh, popular statistical models like linear regression, uh, logistic regression, and various graphical models, including Gaussian, Easy, and Pulse in this package. And we uh, implement uh, these types of uh, regularization last or group last week. So you might add new elements uh, to be free. And uh, so uh, now the question is, uh, if we come back the, to the generalized last week with general D, so how to compute the full regularization pass uh, replacing this uh, complicated scheme? So our suggestion is uh, you, because of the D, existence of D, solving the KPT equation uh, for this problem is much harder than the last two. But we can make a trick. This optimization people use the variable splitting trick. We introduce a new auxiliary variable gamma, which is a sparse, simple L1 sparse. But between gamma and the D beta, we use uh, L2 norm gap. So uh, in our application, this part contribute to the prediction error. Uh, uh, this part contribute the trade-off between the prediction 
and the inter model interpretation of sparse state control. So this one actually makes the uh, linearized Bragman algorithm very simple. We call the split LBI, just in three lines. Everyone can code it on, uh, in your favorite language, and you can try that. Uh, so to our surprise, actually, this algorithm is much more efficient than the general lasso. So we have a paper on NIPS a couple of years ago. We can show that uh, for generalized lasso, there is a uh, uh, sign consistency condition, necessarily and sufficient condition, to guarantee the existence of a point on the gen lasso path such that this sign pattern of your estimator equals to the true sign pattern of your uh, uh, true parameter. However, we can make this uh, necessary and sufficient condition strongly weaker than general lasso using the variable splitting. So that's why the application of this algorithm usually exhibit better performance, uh, can exhibit better performance, uh, not just uh, uh, not just uh, sim uh, simplified algorithm uh, computational approach. And uh, we still use similar idea like before, we use differential inclusion for this uh, involving the D, and uh, we use early stopping, every story can be come back, but uh, variable splitting bring you some new element uh, making the condition better. And uh, now we can apply this uh, general scheme idea to the Alzheimer's disease. So now uh, in Alzheimer's disease, we have uh, uh, input, uh, uh, n input, uh, n samples as n uh, patients or n people. And uh, for each XI that collects the neural imaging data, like uh, 2,500 uh, <coughs> dimensional voxel features. And uh, Y will be the label either uh, normal control or AD or MCI depending on your classification test. And uh, actually, uh, we can put the, uh, these things together in a very simple logistic regression model. So that's the most common used model in uh, uh, this uh, medical imaging uh, data analysis. And uh, uh, we assume the probability to generate Y to be 1 is sub subject to this logistic regression with this loss. And, uh, and uh, how to encode the prior knowledge of vision feature. So doctor believe that vision feature first, the number of walks involved in the prediction is much small. So it means uh, the beta should be very sparse with a small number of than zero. Second, uh, it must be geometrically clustered in a 3D smooth uh, network the grid. So we can use a TV type of using a graph gradient uh, operator to make it a uh, 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 structural sparsity additional one. And also, uh, we such, uh, doctor thinks uh, because uh, the lesion feature correspond to the decay of gray matters. So in the model that correspond to the non-active constraint on data. So all these things have to be considered simultaneously. And then you can design a penalty that looks like this. So this like generalized lasso, you can account this is uh, uh, with uh, identity for sparsity, this is for the smoothness, spatial correlation, and this is for the uh, decay of uh, or degenerate gray matter, so these three. But is that a good model? So if you, our purpose, if you come to a statistics, uh, just suggest you to solve this uh, regularized likelihood, fun, uh, negative likelihood uh, loss function. So actually, all models, remember this uh, sentence by George Box, uh, very famous, I like this sentence, all models are wrong, but some are useful. So what's wrong with this model? This model is, uh, in narrow, this model never pursues the procedure bias because uh, the prior assumption comes from the leisure, vision features. It never, it just ignores the procedure bias, uh, which are mistakenly in my point. Uh, green matter walks of here, as we introduced before. And also, it's hard to solve the path uh, for the involvement of this um, non-trivial D. But uh, the variable splitting with, with our method can actually simultaneously solve this issue. We introduce a new auxiliary variable gamma, and it uses this L2 gap between gamma and beta. Then we can split the prediction, uh, the prediction error we just use beta to fade the prediction uh, accuracy. We use gamma to control the model sparsity. 
And uh, we allow the prediction coercion data doesn't follow gamma too much, only loosely guided by the sparsity pattern by gamma. So in this way, actually, we can find that uh, uh, our, uh, the new loss function will become here. Uh, and uh, the penalty, we can write something like this. And uh, we can solve this differential inclusion. Abstractly, it can be written like this way. If you want the algorithmic ball, uh, it is written here, and I can skip that. And uh, uh, so for this, uh, I can skip that. Uh, for this model, actually, we, we use this model to skip the previous uh, slides I show you. When you uh, have uh, see the mysterious T, uh, I think uh, uh, that essentially follows the step size K multiplied by the uh, uh, the number of steps multiplied by alpha that give you the parameter t. So you get a family of uh, sparse models, but uh, uh, with the exploitation of uh, both procedure bias and lesion feature, you can see the improvement in the in the prediction error. So that's the basic story. But uh, before the finishing this talk, I would like to comment what's the limitation of such models, although it looks very good. And uh, actually, everything we adopt is multivariate models. Multivariate model suffers from the multi-collinearity problem in high-dimensional data. So in fact, actually, if we reduce the resolution from uh, 8 by 8 by 8 uh, mil uh, millimeter per voxel volume to a much smaller, like 222, so then we, if we apply this multivariate model, you increase the resolution, you might expect the result should be better. However, unfortunately, the performance drops. This is because the multi-collinearity, they are highly correlated columns in the design matrix. So any multivariate model will suffer from that. So how to deal with that? So another set of statistics, uh, the people develop lots of univariate models using simple t-test, uh, local IDR, and so on. But uh, those uh, simple univariate model cannot capture spatial correlation among features. So this is another bad point. And uh, we, we know our trouble lies in the heterogeneity in the feature. Lesion feature has a very high level of spatial coherence, and the uh, uh, procedure bias uh, may be different nature. So how can we incorporate these things into univariate model and also remedy this uh, multivariate model? So the answer is uh, yes, we can do something like uh, empirical base. This is uh, uh, uh pioneering approach in the past decade, uh, several decades. So we can change the one layer statistical inference to two layers statistical inference, like deep learning, people use multi-layer. So we assume the, there is a hybrid a mixture of distribution. For disease distribution, it comes from uh, F1 of the voxel. For non-disease, or the normal voxel, it comes from another distribution. And uh, the, uh, there is a hidden variable that controls whether the voxel uh, belongs to this abnormal or disease status or this uh, normal status. And this uh, intermediate variable or hidden variable, actually we can use a very simple logistic regression model to model that. And uh, after that, you can combine these two layers together. You get a loss function as the negative loss likelihood for um, uh, on this Z. And uh, you reintroduce uh, uh, some additional parameter which control the probability of a particular uh, per voxel belonging to the abnormal or normal, normal uh, status or disease or non disease status. So this is a mixture with post, uh, not posterior likelihood. And how to solve that? And you can use a EM algorithm to solve this two-layer empirical bias inference, but we can use a linearized fragment uh, of the same idea solving this algorithm. We take this loss in the E step, we just perform this uh, uh, averaging effect, get uh, um, this uh, conditional expectation estimate, and then we plug in this estimate in the M step, M step performs some gradient ascent or gradient descent using the sparse linearized fragment. So then we can impose the sparsity or spatial coherence on beta. So that becomes a unit variable model, in particular in this uh, single layer. Uh, uh, but the combined two layer together, you can get a sparse model that capture the spatial correlation. So that's the rough idea. 
And uh, in, in all, we can solve this uh, uh, problem efficiently using the linearized fragment, uh, what we introduced before. And here, you can see the new experiment compared to before. And uh, here, we can actually uh, achieve uh, cross-validation accuracy. 92% with very good feature selection. And uh, this uh, experiment is uh, on the 2x2x2 two by two by two voxel volume. It's much higher resolution than before. And uh, and the uh, previous algorithm when we carry to this high resolution simply doesn't work that well. So uh, that's all the story. Hopefully not too long. If you are interested, you can see the uh, reference. Mostly our theory in this uh, uh, two ATA uh, paper and uh, others uh, machine learning and uh, stati uh, AI statistics. And uh, application in medical imaging come mostly in these two uh, MIKAI paper. And we have our package here, and also MATLAB package accompanying uh, these uh, papers. And we are also writing Python package, which uh, will appear maybe in a couple months. So uh, so here is a summary. We see a reticence of boosting. because bo I like boosting because it's a very simple gradient descent algorithm. It's arguably, arguably the best off-shell machine learning algorithm. But now we want some uh, structural sparsity boosting. Uh, we have restrict within descent dynamics you characterize using the differential inclusions. Uh, very simple to get discretized version and uh, easy to get par parallel implementation. And uh, you can also improve model selection uh, prediction, even better than the popular generalized lasso. I think I'm very scared if I give such a talk in Stanford because uh, and will be the enemy <laughs> of lots of people. But I do believe this is a very nice uh, uh, algorithm, very cute algorithm. I view that a uh, gate of applied mathematics to high dimensional statistics. And uh, thank you. Uh, questions? Yes? So. So if they did an MRI of my brain, yeah, would it be, you could take the data and then classify me as normal control, cognitively impaired, or Alzheimer's? Yeah. Your algorithm you could just do it automatically, or how does the algorithm? Uh, to run this algorithm, we need to first uh, register, uh, do the registration. Uh, means uh, taking the original raw data, we map it to a standard template. And that's done automatically? Or you uh, it, yeah, there are some commercial uh, software like the Ashbourne. Uh, they, okay. they, get, they have some uh, commercialized algorithm. Yeah. And uh, in, during that step, you can choose the resolution. And uh, then we choose the res fix the resolution. Uh -huh. uh, then we can get a similar number of features if, uh, for these uh, Training sample, then we can do that. And do you have you done tests of the accuracy? The, the uh, new data. Yeah, with the you know like standard statistics of the you know positive number, false positives, false negatives, all of this kind of analysis. I think for this uh, agony data, we compare various statistics. Usually, people use a two sample t test or local FDR. And definitely, this uh, FDR smoothing, or uh, this uh, Bayesian method is better than those on this data set. I, I don't but know not. what those terms mean. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. for example, what's the number if you took 100? Uh, you know? If uh, we use 2 by 2 by 2, that means uh, we have uh, 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 10,000, more than 10,000 of features. But the patient number is very small. For this data set, uh, like uh, MCI versus uh, NC, uh, just uh, 100, something like 100 patient. But uh, AD versus uh, uh, NC, it's a slightly larger number, maybe 200. But uh, everything just hundreds level. It's nothing about uh, like a thousand, of you, uh, like comparable to the number of features or number of voxels. Uh, if we increase the resolution, we can get a much higher resolution. And even in the future, if we consider genomics data, we can also have uh, 10,000 and even more uh, millions of uh, features. But uh, 
the number of patients are still much smaller. So that's why we want to get some very sparse model to get the very significant uh, feature or parameter coming out and uh, focus on uh, interpret the model with, with this purpose. But for the ABNI data, we test the algorithm compared to traditional method, it seems the performance is better. But for real world data, we didn't uh, get uh, such images. Uh, maybe the doctor in the hospital can help us in the future. But uh, maybe we can also look at the other source of data, like a shop, Michael Shen, like Luna 16. Uh, but that's different nature because we do registration. His, uh, his uh, work is on <coughs> nodule detection, <coughs> unregistered image. It's different nature. Yeah. Any other questions? Price of that one.